At the start of the 1990s, trade between the United States and Canada approached $200 billion, making them one of the largest trading partnerships in the world. Most of that trade passes between their two largest border cities, Detroit, Michigan, and Windsor, Ontario. It comes then as no surprise that few areas in either country enjoy the abundance and diversity of transportation services found in the Windsor, Detroit area, with railways forming a major component of that mix. This is the story of how a key gateway has been improved to speed the flow of today's large railway cars between Canada and the United States. The trading pattern which evolved between Detroit and Windsor has a long and profitable history. It began with the movement of agricultural goods across the Detroit River, which forms the border. Today, it is the Detroit-Windsor-based North American automobile industry which is the engine of the two economies and a primary client of the rail system in eastern North America. In earlier days, cross-border rail transport depended on an elaborate system of barge traffic. By 1909, nine barges moved 2,700 rail cars a day across the Detroit River making it one of the busiest waterways in the world. It also added up to 20 hours to train schedules. Rail operators searched for a faster, more efficient method of cross-border movement, but it was not until the early 1900s that advances in civil engineering made possible the concept of a rail tunnel between the two cities. A call for proposals went out. The winning proposal foresaw the creation of a landmark of underwater tunnel building innovation. It called for the underwater portion to be constructed as two parallel steel tubes, one for each direction of traffic. The approach tunnels were built using conventional techniques. The tubes were constructed in 80 meter sections, which were floated downriver on a barge and precision sunk into a 13 meter deep trench dug into the riverbed. Divers then joined the sections together. When all the sections were joined, cement was poured from barges on the surface through canvas chutes to completely encase the tubes. The steel shell of each was then pumped dry and the inside finished with a 50 centimeter thick concrete lining. At a cost of almost $10 million, the Detroit River Tunnel was officially opened on July 1, 1910. Rail cars, which previously had taken up to 20 hours to cross the Detroit River by barge, could now move through the tunnel in minutes. While the Detroit River Tunnel has served the American and Canadian economies well for more than 80 years, during the 1970s, change began to sweep the North American railroad system. Growing competition led industry to demand more efficient and highly specialized transportation, including just-in-time delivery. The railroads responded with industry-specific service patterns and specialized cars, which were often higher, wider, and longer than those the tunnel had been designed for. They had to cross the river the less efficient way, by barge, or be routed to another gateway. In 1985, the Detroit River Tunnel was purchased by CNCP Niagara Detroit Partnership, a joint venture of the government owned Canadian National Railway and the investor owned CP Rail System. Shortly after the 1985 purchase, the new owners commissioned a feasibility study to upgrade the tunnel to handle modern railway cars. The study determined that one of the tubes could be enlarged to accept the larger new rail cars at an acceptable cost. In 1990, the partners decided to pursue the tunnel enlargement and called for tenders. A year later, CN withdrew financially from the Detroit River Tunnel project in favor of building a new tunnel between Sarnia, Ontario and Port Huron, Michigan. 
CP Rail System remains committed to the project, deciding to proceed with the financing of a slightly scaled down expansion. The project began with a highly detailed computer-aided study of the existing tunnel and modern rail car design. The study determined the best way to make the enlargement was to remove some of the interior concrete lining at the ceiling, or crown, the floor, or invert, and the sides. Work began in August 1992 with the improvement of track leading to the south tube, which would handle all traffic during enlargement of the north tube. Temporary rails were installed on the side benches to carry a variety of equipment during operations. Crown and invert concrete was probed to accurately measure lining thickness. As tolerances for the grinding operation were practically zero, these measurements were used to precisely determine the grinder's cutting path and depth. In addition, work was constantly checked by templates which followed the grinders. After crown and invert enlargement, the sides were ground and checked. In the meantime, in the underwater or subaqueous portion of the tunnel, holes were drilled through the lining, the steel tube, and into the concrete encasement. A grouting concrete was injected through these holes to fill any cracks or voids left during the original pour 80 years before. Engineers also took advantage of the enlargement project to update the tunnel's electrical and drainage systems. After grinding, cleaning, and additional preparatory work, a new floor was poured and a modern direct fixation slab track system, which fastens the rails directly to the concrete liner, was installed. Environmental considerations guided planning throughout the entire project. Disposal of construction waste was subject to the environmental requirements of four different governments, and water used during operations was double filtered on site to remove waste particles. The Detroit River Tunnel expansion, completed in 1994 at a cost of more than $27 million, is contributing to faster and more efficient rail transportation through North America's busiest international trading gateway. The enlarged tunnel now accommodates enclosed multi-level motor vehicle carriers, trailers on flat cars, and eight foot six inch double stack containers riding on specialized well cars. These types of equipment were previously taken across the river by barge at the cost of a 12 hour delay. In addition to its Canadian owners, a number of U.S. railroads have access to the tunnel. The Detroit River Tunnel Enlargement Project stands as a model of CP Rail System's commitment to effectively satisfy its customers' transportation needs now and in the future.